start a little further out here in case they move back this way some. New Tech Lures out here with Bo James, Table Rock Lake. Living the dream, Bo. Living the dream? Yeah, you're living the dream, man. So what are we throwing, Bo? Yeah, we're gonna see if we can catch some on a jig on the bottom of this creek. And why are we up this creek? What are the conditions? Well, we killed them yesterday, but we had more water running in, but they usually hang around for a day or two, so we're hoping that there's still a few here. So we had some rain recently. Yeah. We got a little bit of color. Caught them on the old brown and blue. And you can see I'm not too color conscious. I got a black head, brown and blue skirt, green pumpkin trailer. Catch them on the Elite Series grass jig. We caught all what we caught in here yesterday, right in that area, right up there where those, that timber is. This is kind of that magic depth they were hanging in. That's how we land them when you catch them on new tech. Just throw them over the side. Look at there. Nice fish. Mm -hmm. Top of the head every time. Yeah. Look at that one. Look there, Toby. That's a dandy right there, boys. Yeah. Boom! There was one left. <laughs> On the grass, Jim. Uh -huh. Take a look at that, Jim. Just hanging that trailer chunk style. Yep. Getting that action. Mm -hmm. Brown and blue. Catches fish all over the nation. Yeah, I know a lot of people. That brown and blue is catching on all over. We're selling a lot of that. I have fished with that color for years, and I've caught fish all over the country on it. And it, to me, it's more universal color than black and blue. Which is our top seller, black and blue. But yeah, that brown and blue is really coming on strong. So you people notice, we're not over on the bank fishing. And that's, you know, what a lot of people get caught up in all the time is they want to be by the bank. 10 foot of water out half a mile from land is just the same as it is over there six inches from the bank. 10 foot's 10 foot. 10 foot's 10 foot. There's I something saw. over there. <laughs> Feeding time. It's the sushi hour. Okay. 
Shad splatted. See some ringing up there. Just gotta be patient. Now that yesterday most of the bites there was never any bite. They'd just be swimming off with it all at once. That fish there got that nice tick everybody wants to feel. But that isn't the case all the time when with a bite. Let's see if we can't get another bite or two up through here. Just keep it. There's fish in here. You don't know where you're going to get a bite. Just got to keep a keep a slinging. There's a good example. Why I don't bother with a, a net in the boat. Don't need one. Don't lose them at the boat much, huh? Nope. No. When you set the hook, just pull for all your line to hold up and throw them over on the floor. So what kind of line are you throwing right now, Bo? That's a 50-pound test strand clear blue fluorescent braid. Throwing braid? Yep. Don't think the fish will see that line? <laughs> Uh, Last one didn't seem to mind. All, yeah, all the uh, big old wires and crap on a rig. That don't seem to bother them. So, why does your fishing line? And if they're actually smart enough to deduce and reason that there's a danger with fishing line, don't you think that the hook would be more of a danger than the line is? And they can see that hook every bit as good as they get big old hook. I can see that better than I can that line. So this is just reaction and instinct. You're either hungry or pissed. Yeah, because, you know, that's why you have all kinds of weights at jigs, because fishing boils down to fishing the right depth at the right speed to get a reaction bite out of that fish. You know, if they're actually hungry in a feeding mode you could throw anything in there and you're going to get a bite of some kind but the rest of the time you've got to make them hit and there's another thing there's always kind of dis discussions on this i hold my rod up here in front of the reel that line's underneath my thumb. On a man, that's the most sensitive part of your hands right there. You can feel that line slack off or tension up. You cannot feel that palming your reel. So these guys that palm the reel. And the other thing is, on the hook set. Leverage. Yeah. Number one is, doing it this way, you're using the wrong set of muscles. If you ever tried hitting somebody with an uppercut like this, you don't get any power on it. But you roll that hand underneath, you're going to knock them out. You're doing the same thing. You're using the right set of muscles. You're moving it to the bicep. Yeah. And plus, you got that tucked up underneath here. So if you want to know it's, how Bo does that hook set. It's lightning quick. It's powerful. Bicep.
<laughs> but guess where he's hooked. Take a look at that. So that jig just rotated a vertical instantly. Yeah. And see where see where the hook is? Yep. Clear back here. Does it every time. It's a hooking machine. And that tow car hook is brutal. Absolutely no flex. No. It goes through them. Instant penetration. Yeah. Nothing like it on the market. Absolutely. Nice one. Yeah. Absolutely the most advanced See, jig on the market. Fix the gut on these things. That uh, pretty. Yeah, and so see what I'm doing here? The guide arms was all mashed down, out of place. That's the beauty with these arms. See how I just flexed them back up, ready to go. Now that fish was a little bit more over on the flat and he bit it just as it dropped off into the creek. So just let that go to the bottom and then just pick it up and just let it swing to you across the bottom there. Okay. Not doing anything fancy. Did that one have some Feel to it. Oh yeah, he smacked it. Mm. Poof. I'm ready for some smackdown. <laughs> Linda's ready for the smackdown. See, and we're in that six, seven foot water range. You'd think husband and wife, oh how lovely, they're out fishing together. No, it's competition. <laughs> That's it's right. Just <laughs> be honest, people. Yeah, I'm giving her a little payback from the other night. It's competition always. No matter uh. checkers. If it wasn't for the two catfish I caught the other night, she gave me a spanking. <laughs> I didn't like it either. <laughs> Went home with the pouty baby, did you? Oh, he gets a little cranky. <laughs> well, there's a few of them still here, and we got some other creeks to go check around in. All right, Bo, I see you switch baits. What are you throwing here? It's an eighth ounce crappie jig with uh, what people call the Ned rig, but we've done that for years. Just take half of a Senko and glue on there. And we're catching plenty of bass. These are the elastic ones, which they do float. So when this thing, when you stop it on the bottom, this thing floats up like that. So it... And even with those little guide arms, we're catching plenty of bass on that little hook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I caught seven or eight on it yesterday. And why did you switch to that bait? Got one. Uh-huh. All right. Let's see where he's hooked, Linda. <laughs> line, line. I'll go ahead and hold that. Yeah. Woohoo! Little one. The Linda's throwing the regular Elite. <laughs> a little love, Toby. <laughs> uh huh, right there in that color change. Top of the head. Kind of put a. I'm kind of hard on them when I jerk. Yeah. Well, there was one left around. He bit right here underneath their feet. She does too. A good one. Well, don't break your rod, set him on the floor. <laughs> you can't. Right there. Top of the hood. That's a nice one. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Ooh, that bird is gone. Look at the gut on that thing. Did he give you a peck? Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, she caught it over here. That's a good one. So here's something to remember with this hook. If you'll roll it instead of trying to just push on it. See how it roll got out? Nice fish. Yeah, it travels in an arc. Dandy. Uh-oh, two minute penalty. Yeah, I told you there were some fish over here on the other side. Danged if you didn't catch one. Comes the ducks. Get ready, boys. Get ready. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you can go over there and catch him. Pecked it. Yep. Well, you're fine. Uh oh, we got a Kentucky now. Uh oh. Guess where he's hooked. Now you got the most species. Right through the top of the head. It's a hooking machine. Little Kentucky. 3H grass jig, brown and blue. Uh, largemouth and Kentuckys are actually a member of the perch family. <laughs> Biologists could give you the official name. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I just like to catch them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this is a large male. See how the tail is flat? Yeah. And uh, Kentucky will have an indent right there in the middle of it. A little more forked. Uh-huh. And see his, the tongue's smooth. It's, but in Kentucky, the tongue will be rough right there. And the- uh, His eyes on his red. Yeah. See the large mouth? That bone comes back behind the eyelet. Mm -hmm. And on Kentucky, uh-oh. Toby, Toby saved him. All right, let's put him back. Put on the Kentucky, that bone? Yeah, it's in, up to the front of the eye, instead of the back of the eye. Well, well, well. 